based by blogging because at the end of the day most blogging is commentary. Blogging is, the co is, is those things that you get in newspapers where you know somebody gets to write about the interesting thing that they did that day or pontificate about what the government is doing but very very little blogging is somebody actually going down and being there in person and coming back and saying this is what happened um, you couldn't get the kind of you know there are places that news gathering has changed the world probably the, the biggest and most obvious of those would be the, the downfall of Richard M. Nixon you know, the story as recounted in all the President's Men, where Woodward and Bernstein investigating a tiny little burglary at the, the Watergate Hotel suddenly kept following the thing for eight months and pulling the strings and brought down the presidency. Um, I don't see any bloggers who have the resources to do that. And um, nor do I think that that's what blogging is designed to do. I think blogging is an amazing communications tool. And it's an amazing way of pointing people at things that are going on. But really, you don't read a blogger to find... You may read a blogger for breaking news, but that will be because that's somebody who's pointing at the links where the news is breaking and letting you know what's happening and what they think of it. So that's what I think. Um, and on the graphic novels, now that Marvel Man, the fiasco is over, could we expect to see anything new from you soon? I don't know. I'm going out to... I'm, I'm having talks right now with Marvel, who have acquired the rights to Marvel Man from Nick Anglo, the creator. Um, and we'll be going out to New York in December to spend a day or two with, with Joe Posada and the Marvel people and find out. I, I have no idea what their plans are. Um, but I really want to know and would love to find out if the story that I started telling uh, 22 years ago and stopped telling 16 years ago is ever going to get finished. I would love, I mean, you know, there's, there's one finished episode that nobody's ever seen. Miracle Man 25 is all finished and lettered and, and is currently in Mark Buckingham's basement. Um, I'd love to bring that out and I'd love to finish the story I started. So we'll find So we'll find out. Thank you. Okay, can we have a question over there? Hi Neil, um, thank you for writing. My name is Tiang Yang. Um, one of my favorite anecdotes involves uh, two of my favorite um, comic book creators, um, Joseph and Alan Moore. Could you tell us how you uh, get to be known as Gary Chong? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, Alan Moore is, as you probably all know, a very, very big and hairy comic book creator. <laughs> and I was in Northampton. I'd go up to see Alan. Alan rarely, occasionally I'll come into, you know, be in London and we'll see each other. But mostly, if you want to go to see Alan, you go to see Alan. You go up to Northampton. And we got up to dinner. Now, I had two different kinds of reaction to blood and gore and human innards and things like that. If I'm writing about it, I can get absolutely fascinated in a completely detached way, which is just enthusiastic. I remember calling my doctor and saying, I really need to talk to, like, a, a you know, who does autopsies? What happens? And he said, oh, I did autopsies. Yes, I said, great, talk me through them. And we're having this wonderful conversation because I'm, I'm writing American Gods and I need somebody to take somebody apart and so I'm learning all about you know, so you put this into the bucket which you put on one side and then he's going on, okay, and then you put everything back in in the same order that you put, took them out and I said, why is it the same order? He said, well, if you try and change it, they won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
and when it's like we do the kidneys come out of the kitchen, and we put that in the bucket. To, and um, I wonder if it's really rotted now. Okay, good. So if I'm going to be using it, that I am completely not squeamish. But I do have my squeamish side. Um, and sometimes it takes me by surprise. The, um, I remember 20 something years ago when my daughter Holly, uh, my, my wife, my ex wife Mary, was, was pregnant with Holly, very pregnant. So we went down to pregnancy lesson sort of thing where a nice lady shows you, has a, a, has a dummy of a baby and a dummy of a human pelvis and say, here, this and that and the other. And then sometimes, of course, it can get stuck here and she's pulling at it and this plastic baby's head fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and on one hand, it's just a plastic pelvis and the baby used... And it, the head was not meant to fall off. It was not like a detachable head. <laughs> coming at it through the it's got this forceps and bonk, <laughs> the head comes up and drop off under that. And I headed off to the, I said, I'll be right back. I just went off to the toilet, sat down on the floor until the world started going around. And <laughs> somehow in my head that it turned into, ah, death of the babe, ah. <laughs> so, that's giving you context. Um, but, and, and, that's, and that's maybe occurred, again, three times in the last 20, 30 years, something like that. Um, the, um, so, Alan and Moore, we're having dinner. And Alan has just written the longest, goriest sequence in From Hell. And I said, so what are you working on? He said, well, I've just written this great thing. <laughs> uh, William Garth, right, it's the death of Mary Kelly. It all takes place, it's like 50 pages long, it all takes place in this one room. And um, first of all, he goes in, he cuts her up, he's killed her, and then, you know, he's pulling out her kidney and everything. <laughs> 